the end of the 15th century, King Kanya Maharitya dramatically emerged as the ruler of the state, in a style akin to Chandragupta Maurya's ascension to the throne, as he got his right by killing conspiratorial assembly members and generals. King Kanya Maharitya was repeatedly confronted by Sultan Hussein Shah of Bengal. Due to his strategic acumen and guerrilla warfare abilities, he always dominated Hussein Shah. He also took over a large part of Bengal. And in one instance, his soldiers even brought back one of Hussein Shah's cannons to Tripura. King Kanya Maharikya carried out many war campaigns. On the one hand, he astonishingly climbed the boat of the cookies and beat them thus spreading his kingdom up to Burma. On the other hand, he made continuous efforts to win Arkan, the king's confidants, army chief Rai Kachar and his younger brother Rai Kosum, were his impenetrable armor and lethal weapons. Both of these fierce warriors played an important role in winning many wars. Along with his might and ferocity, King Dhanya Mahikya was also filled with creative energy. Over and above the expansion of state boundaries, art and culture also spread under his rule. The Chaturdash Devta Temple, Mount Tripura Sundari Temple, and Bhairav Temple built by him are testimony to this claim. King Dhanya Maharikya introduced his humanitarian side and gave the message that bravery is not only in facing the enemy but also in challenging the harmful traditions that have become an obstacle to the welfare of the people. O oh, King, it's absolutely necessary to sacrifice. Only when the gods and goddesses are happy will the kingdom prosper and your fame increase. I respect all you priests. But I rather accept infamy over the glory that comes from slaughtering thousands of innocent animals and young people every year. You are the epitome of dharma. Why are you saying these anti-religious things? My dharma teaches me kindness and truthful conduct. I have always given the right prize to the craftsmen engaged in the construction of our temples for their labor. If I wanted, I would have used force in the name of dharma to make them work for free. What would then be the difference between me and the Yamanas? For me, dharma is what benefits everyone. And thus, it is my order that from now on, innocent youth will not be sacrificed. King Dhanya Marikya always inspired his successive princes with his personality and work. So much so that King Govind Marikya, who was enthroned in the 17th century, lost his kingdom due to his non-violent and compassionate ways. He wandered through many a forest, yet never abandoned the righteous path. In 1660, King Govind Marikya was residing in Arkan, he had to leave his kingdom due to an internal conflict. In search of him, Mughal Prince Shuja reached Arka and asked him for help. And King Govind Marikya observed his duty as the giver of shelter fearlessly. But this news also reached Shuja's brother, Aurangzeb. What does Shuja think? That if he hides in Tripura, he will be saved from my sword? Issue a royal decree to the king of Tripura and explain to him in strong words that if he doesn't obey the orders of the Mughal Sultanate, the consequences will be dire. Send the messenger immediately. So, what rest did my brother make for me? He has conveyed that I hope you will arrest Shuja and send him to me promptly under the supervision of your soldiers so that our long-standing friendship remains intact. The consequences of not obeying my orders will not be good for our relationship. So, what will you do now, my lord? 
I even gave up my royal pleasures for the sake of my principles. I will continue to observe my duty towards my refuge, even if I have to give up my life. As long as you stay with us, you'll be safe. Due to such ideals, King Govind Marikya was called Rajkishi. He regained power in Tripura and established a welfare monarchy. Marikya kings always engaged in politics of public interest, but they also displayed unflinching valor when wars were imposed on them. Sacrificial kings like King Dev Marikya, Vijay Marikya, Amar Marikya, Rajdhar Marikya, Yashodhar Marikya, and Kalyan Marikya did not deprive their people even during the greatest calamities. King Krishna Marikya had a long struggle with Shamshir Ghazi to provide peace and prosperity to his people. In 1760, the king made old Agatala his capital instead of Udevar. But peace sustained for a short time. The British had stepped onto Indian soil. From 1761, the conflict started between Tripura and the East India Company. King Krishna Marikya always remained dominating on the battlefield, but the British continued to strengthen their hold with their diplomacy. Times changed rapidly. The Mughals collapsed, and now power went into the hands of the British. Even after this change, Marikya continued to perform his duty. In 1838, King Krishna Kishore Mahitya laid the foundation of present-day Agartala. Then came the pioneering prince, who brought about a wave of modernity in Tripura. King B. Chandra Mahitya assumed power in 1862. Now the meaningless wars had stopped, and progressive ideas were beginning to mold Tripura's character. Like his righteous ancestors, King Bij Chandra Marikya attacked social ethos. Sati Pratha stopped, and Tripura got freedom from slavery. While social reforms were taking shape on one side, new systems were also being formed. However, the king's biggest contribution was in the form of a zealous encouragement of art. He was truly a connoisseur of music, literature, folk literature, and photography. King B. Chandra's photo art became so widely popular that the American photographic magazine Practical Photographer published an illustrated biography of the king in one of its issues. King B. Chandra was quite famous for experimenting with photographs. He took a picture of himself and the queen with his own camera, and this was probably the first selfie in the history of mankind. In addition to preserving various arts, he himself was a well, proficient now, musician and poet. The king was also an expert in painting. He employed a French artist to make portraits of his ancestor kings. There was no limit to his imagination and talent. When Avad collapsed after the revolt of 1857, it was King Bij Chandra who gave displaced artists a place in his court. The Navratnas of his court included artists from all over the country, and soon they also came in contact with India's greatest poet. Grieved by the sudden death of his life partner, Queen Bhanumati Devi, the king was rescued from a sea of mourning by a poem called Bhagno Hede, written by a young poet. The name of that talented unknown poet was Rabindranath Tagore. After this incident, an unbreakable relationship was formed between the royal family of Tripura and Tagore. Tagore studied the history of Tripura with the help of the king and placed it in his immortal works, Raj Rishi, Visarchan and Mukut. After King Bish Chandra Marikya, Tagore also had close relations with King Radha Kishore Marikya. The royal family of Tripura also maintained their friendship by extending economic and moral support to Tagore in Shantiniketan and his other reform-related works. The British rule was a period of peace for Tripura. But whenever the opportunity came to show bravery, Tripura's soldiers triumphed 
had received at least for their courage. At the time of World War II, when the Japanese army was moving towards India, Tripura sent its army for the war in Burma and played an important military role in preventing the Japanese invasion of India. The first Tripura rifles, prepared by King Bir Bikram, crushed the Japanese encroachment. The warriors of Tripura glorified the motherland and received honor and praise from British officers. The Marikya dynasty, with high ideals and great kings, has never deviated from its royal duty. But even the brightest star completes its journey and sets. Three months before India's independence, the death of King Bir Bikram Kishore Marikya Bahadur was akin to a cataclysm for Tripura. After his death, his 14-year-old son, King Kirit Bikram Kishore Marikya was declared the King of Tripura, and the reins of governance were taken over by his mother, Maharani Kanjan Prabha Mahadevi. But after the death of King Bir Bikram, not a day has passed without civil disturbances in the state. Had King Bir Bikram been alive for another three months, he could have prevented the destruction caused by the direct action of the Muslim League. The Tripura government was moving towards anarchy. There was commotion everywhere, and there was a distinct threat of Pakistan seizing Tripura. In this period of utter despair, a woman once again protected the state. In the 13th century, Maharani Tripura Sundari raised the sword to confront the enemy. Now years later, Shatrani Kanjan Brahma Mahadevi took crucial decisions that secured her kingdom. Many great sons of Tripura agitated to save their motherland and increased the power of the queen. The queen briefed the then Union Home Minister, Vallabhai Patel, about the situation in Tripura. Later, the queen herself went to New Delhi to discuss the issue with Union Home Minister Patel. Additional forces were sent to Tripura and the situation in the state improved. The Tripura Ascension Agreement was signed by the Queen on the 9th of September 1949, resulting in Tripura becoming a part C state of India. The glorious rule of the Marikya dynasty came to its conclusion as Tripura proceeded towards a promising future. Tripura is currently the third smallest state in India. But its surrounding regions have a long and inspiring past. Excellent art, a wealth of knowledge, and a cherished cultural heritage. The people of Tripura are the state's greatest asset because they have received traits that are constantly thrusting Tripura to its apex stage of development. Basic education is given free of cost to children, and Tripura is far ahead of many other states in the country in terms of literacy. On one hand, this region has an unrivaled reservoir of natural resources, and on the other, its temples, palaces, and natural beauty attracts a large number of visitors each year. Tripura is like a little water vessel with an ocean of possibilities. With the ideal of Gil Vidar, Gita Sarvikam in their hearts, the untiringly diligent residents of Tripura are constantly striving to make their state the pride of the nation. That's the sole intention of every Tripuri and Tripura. Lively Tripura, magnificent Tripura, may your gentle Tripura remain strong and prosperous for ages to come.
Вот там. Да. Да. Till now, we were watching the sound and light show about the great history of this royal palace. After this beautiful light and sound show, we will move on to our cultural presentations. Namaskar and a very good evening. Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura, Professor Dr. Manik Shahaji, Honorable dignitaries, delegates, distinguished guests, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. Tripura, a small state of Indian Union, is an unspoiled natural gem nestled in the tip of Northeast. It flourishes on the bounties of nature, but the beauty of the state is heightened by its rich cultural traditions. The state is a home to 19 tribal communities along with Bengali and Manipuri community that contribute to its rich composite cultural heritage of Tripura. Each community has its own set of traditions and customs that represents their lifestyle as well. Since the historical times, the state has welcomed Many people landing from outside for different reasons, leading to a beautiful assimilation of this culture. And the state with the time has produced many renowned figures in the field of art, music, 
literature, and sports. And this evening, we are very proud and honored to get this opportunity to showcase this rich cultural heritage of Tripura. And we begin it with a wholesome musical concert with instruments. And this performance is to be presented by eminent artists, 31 artists indeed, of instruments. And these instruments will be supported by female and male vocals. And also, we will see the uses of melodic instruments, folk instruments, and percussion instruments. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this musical concert. Ganapati Ganesh, Lambodan, so Pujachar, Ekadanta Chandrama, Lalatarat, Brahma, Vishnu Mahesh, Talat, Drupa the Gav, Adimichitra Gananat, Aj, Meridanga Baja, Taradara, Taradara Kata, Dinner 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 Nagana, Dana Dana Dinner 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 Dinner
Thank you, artists, for this beautiful performance. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This whole composition was choreographed and directed by none other than our eminent artists of the state, Shri Siddhartha Sharkar and Shri Arunavashar. Ladies and gentlemen, after this mesmerizing performance by the eminent instrumental artist of the state, now we will move on to showcasing our traditional dances of Tripura. But before that, let me dwell some facts, more facts about Tripura. It is not only a treasure trove of cultural richness, but surrounded by Bangladesh in three sides. This landlocked state has also striven to keep abreast of the time in different fields, as well as it has played a significant role in creating a conducive environment of exchange in terms of culture, trade and commerce, tourism, and diplomatic relations. Due to its strategic geophysical location, it stands as a crucial player in developing greater connections with our neighboring nation. In coming days, we look forward to moving further ahead in all directions for contributing this towards a building a better world for all. So ladies and gentlemen, after this mesmerizing performance, now our next presentation for this grand cultural event is 15 traditional dances of Tripura, which are being practiced and performed since decades in Tripura. These traditional dances will be presented one after other, starting with Hojagiri dance of Riyang community, followed by Sangrai dance of Mok community, Mamita dance of Tripuri people, Chero of Mizo community, Biju dance of Chakma community, Dhamai, Holi dance, Ravindra Nritya, Odissi, Manipuri Pungchalam and Ras Leela dance, Bharatnatyam, Kathak, Baul dance, dance on the song of pioneer singer Sachin Dev Burman, and last but not the least, Gajan dance. And these dances are choreographed by state's eminent dance gurus, Dr. Shubhrata Roy, Dr. Dev Jyoti Lashkar, and Srimati Sanhita Gosh. So, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy these traditional dances.
Ni ma pani sa, 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 ni ma pani sa,
स्वीकार शाना मिले लोके बोले लालन फुकी कौन जातीर छे लोके बोले लालन फुकी कौन जातीर छे बोले लालन फकीर कुंजा तिर चले तो के बोले लालन फकीर कुंजा तिर चले हमी कारे की बाबोली ओरे हमी कारे की बाबोली ओरे दिशा न मिले तो के बोले लालन फकीर कुंजा तिर चले तो के बोले लालन फकीर कुंजा तिर चले
with this eye captivating dance performances ladies and gentlemen we have come to an end of this beautiful culture program we thank you all for gracing this event with your glorious presence we hope that it was a pleasant evening that we could share with you all we thank you once again for gracing this event with your glorious presence this entire event is created and organized by information and culture affairs department government of tripura coordinated by indian council for cultural relations government of india so once again we thank you all namaskar and khulumka and all the delegates dignitaries honorable cm sir are requested to please proceed for the dinner in darbal hall